person. No, I'm just um, I just uh, done a four piece episode on uh, the Ship of Fools. Uh, I can start putting that online tonight. I didn't have any Wi-Fi yesterday. And, um, what Ship of Fools? The, the blue boat that's uh, docked at NDSM, the, the theater uh, company boat. They're oh, gonna cool. they're gonna set off on a trip around the world. Oh, you got a you got a relationship with them? Or? Uh, well, I've I've been coming over there for the last six months ever since I first docked up in Amsterdam, and uh, so you know, got to know them, and I'd, I'd been doing some filming, and and uh, you know, I had quite a bit of loose footage lying around of them, so I thought, like, okay, if I'm doing this journal, I might as well just consecrate a a large episode on them, you know. Because they're they're gonna start off on a on a major adventure. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, because you know, I mean, I like to do this stuff, not just you know, I don't just want to showcase my own stuff or put art videos or, or whatever. I also just want to go like, hey, you know, this is an interesting person. Who the fuck are you? And uh, tell me about yourself. You know, just to you know. No, it's fine. The well, last couple of books I was reading was uh, Hunter Thompson. Oh, nice. I just finished, um, which one did I read? Kingdom of Fear. Uh-huh. Wait, which one is that? that one. That's the one where he's sort of like, uh, yeah, well, biography piece. And what was the other one? Uh, the one before, I don't, I don't remember the title. It's... I don't remember the title. Is it good? It's a thinner one. Yeah, yeah, I, li I like I like reading him because he's just raw, you know? Yeah. Just... Oh, you've read he, him for he, a while. He just, he just writes what, he, what he's thinking and what's happening and, you know, he's not... He's not looking for the effect, he's already got it, you know? That's, yeah. that's I like that in writers, you know, like... Uh, Have you read a bunch of his stuff? Not a bunch, about three, four books, I guess. Before that, I was reading uh, the hippos were boiled in their tanks. The what? The hippos were boiled in their tanks. That's not Thompson. That's not Thompson. That's um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Bukowski, I think. You don't have this quality of dualism that um, they're leveraging it almost in an economic way to deal with their own insecurities of like, okay, people are losers and assholes. I also maybe, but if I get enough losers and assholes below me in my hierarchical pyramid, I'm a higher level. And in fact, I might even be a high enough level where I don't have to acknowledge my shadow and my negativity and my in insecurity. Um, and it's a whole weird fucking system, you know, I think the way, uh, Christianity exists and religion exists in America, it holds that in place where the church forgives you your failings, your shadow, your darkness, but it requires you to bring, you know, the skins of others into the church or into the system. You know, that's how credit works, you know. And, I, and then it's all good if people still acknowledge their humanity and, like, can give the nod and the wink about it. It's like, look, I get that I have this too. But for right now, this is our relationship, and, you know, it's possible that we can acknowledge the darkness and find salvation, as I understand it. Whereas I think a guy like Donald Trump is like, no, 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 no. We're not going to acknowledge anything ever. And, you know, he never takes responsibility for anything. He never has. In fact, his whole economic model is to, to take on debt and not pay it back in such lar a large scale that... You know, he's too big to fail, basically. Or, and, uh, yeah, America definitely allows that kind of person.
subject of you know making an income these days and, and you know because basically I'm just fed up with going to galleries that go like no 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 because we only work with that or that or we want 70% of whatever you make or, or we've only got space next year or in two years or you know all of that yeah that's such a rat race you know, I mean, no it's just it's inefficient you know yeah. what I mean it's it's like it's, it's basically makes you feel like you, you're a fish and now you have to go and, and swim into this guy's net or into that guy's net and then if you're lucky they'll fish you up and serve you for dinner like you know but it's basically it doesn't feel nice you know what i mean yeah but on the other hand it's also like people just have these preconceptions about artists where they're like either you're like starving in a in an attic somewhere with a crust of bread and you know writing with with uh, with broken pencils and, and painting with uh, with your coffee or something or you're this you know, I'm too tormented to, to to do my thing and I'm an artist but I'm sitting at the bar 24-7 or you're just blatantly rich and whatever you fart on canvas is, is gonna sell for, for way too fucking much, you know, and then people forget about you when you're dead but to me it's like, I've actually had people at an exposition going like wow, he's gonna be famous when he's dead it's like, excuse me I'm right here, you can buy a painting now, and then I won't be dead and I can make some more work. How about it, you know? It's just, it's really fucking weird. <laughs> well, basically, uh, what I've been seeing so far in the north of Amsterdam would be like, I've heard prices ranging from 400 to 15, 1600 euros. We came across one compound that was basically all uh, workshops and artists, uh, Places like a few, few floors up. Are you, are you on Facebook? <laughs> yeah, but I don't do. I don't. I don't spend much time on, on Facebook. Yeah, actually. I don't recommend. That. <laughs> no, the, the, there, no, but there's this page for the Rietveld Academy students mostly. Are on there. Otherwise, you force people still to go into something they don't want to come back and pay you for something they do instead of just being able to do what they want. Yeah. Which is basically. And, and if they if they like your project, they, they can still offer something. Yeah. I think it also I like it, it keeps the spirit in the right place. Hi, um, I'm Josse. I'm currently we're at the Weekday. Uh, it's a living community in Onselierwaver, uh, close to Mechelen in Belgium. In this place, we're living with uh, 11, 12 people together, and we try to be self-sufficient. So we're growing a lot of veggies, permaculture leaves. Um, we have mushrooms. We have goats. We have animals uh, for milk and. For, for some meat also. Um, today it's a it's it's a it's a feast because we are uh, we just have sowed a field full of a mixture of uh, flowers to create more biodiversity in the area. Uh, I myself I'm very passionate about water, um, water management, water uh, purification, and also about uh, natural building. <laughs> Eco Gardens, and I also got a business in that. Um, it's called Eco Manus. Eco Manus is the website. Um, in this website, I uh, I explain you everything if you want to know. But um, and the last project we did uh, together with a friend here, we're also cooperating in between uh, the community with other people um, to create projects outside. We created an earth chip uh, that is going to be a, a classroom. Um, for kids that are going to be taught in permaculture. So I'm really, really excited about that too. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, to say suffering and bleeding are male qualities is basically justifying war. Because if they're male qualities, like, yeah, I'm going to cut you open and kill you. <laughs> it's like, that's how it's a quality of male. You know, but suffering and bleeding is a quality of female existence. It's like, that's how the species, that's what makes humans eternal. It's like, you can't regenerate yourself unless you have women, you know. A hundred men and no women is yeah. One woman, you have hope. So, you know, it's like, so a matriarchy, I'm like, yeah, eternity is a matriarchy. The eternal quality of humans of anything is fem a female quality. So if we want to keep living, My name is Rob Greenfield. I'm an adventurer and activist on a mission to uh, wake people up to how their, act, their everyday actions have an impact on the world around them through the things that we do on a daily basis, from food to water to energy, waste, transportation, all the things that we uh, do every day without ever thinking about it, and just inspire people to make positive changes in their life so that they're living in a more environmentally friendly way, in a way that's better for the people around them. And, living for the benefit of the earth, our communities, and ourselves. And I'm here in uh, Belgium at the moment. I'm on a seven-week tour in Europe, speaking in a handful of countries. And uh, it's great to be here, and it's been a wonderful experience so far. Cool. And um, so you, give, you go around giving talks? One of the things that I do is, is speak, but I try to do less speaking and more doing, you know, more actions that, that are you know, beneficial. So whether it's days of action in the garden or maybe hosting community bike rides, doing trash cleanups, uh, activism campaigns, it's really just, I try to spend less time talking and more time actually doing things. Yeah, um, one of the things you've done I've seen is you've written a book. I have written a book, yeah. Can you, um, what it, what it's a, about? Uh, my book is called Dude Making a Difference. It uh, follows the adventures of my first bike ride across the United States where I uh, tried to live as environmentally friendly of a life as I possibly could uh, to raise awareness about sustainability. Cool. And if people are interested to invite you for a talk or anything, can they contact you? Uh, you can uh, find me on uh, through the internet on my website. It's just robgreenfield.org or you can also find me on social media just by typing in my name. Uh, into social media and you'll find me on there. Cool, okay, thanks. And that concludes today's episode. We're back at Mechelen Central Station and uh, going back home. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.